You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Welcome back, my friends, to yet another episode of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. What are we talking about today? We're talking about something that as reasonable people might seem like a completely, you know, you have those ideas and then you hear something contrary to your idea and you're like, what are you thinking there? This is one of those stories. Here's the headline. Governor Newsom, California, Governor Newsom's experiment to get rid of public trash cans in San Francisco seems to have failed. We've got too much trash, way too much trash. What do we do? Okay, what attracts trash? Trash cans. People put trash in trash cans. Therefore, if we get rid of the trash cans, we'll have less trash. Let's reimagine, let's rethink things going down that road, get rid of the trash cans. I think this is a social experiment that's going to work. Doesn't that sound super counterintuitive? It does to me, but we got to read about it because we got to figure out, we got to get to the bottom of this. Trash can, do you have a trash can? Do you ever get to that point where you're looking around and you're like, if there's no damn trash can here, I'm just going to throw this on the ground. You think that, but you don't do it. Why? Because littering is wrong. That's the bottom line, right? So whether or not you've got trash cans shouldn't really determine, oh, I'll just toss my toss my stuff here. I cover so many homeless encampment type stuff that I'm just kind of used to seeing trash on the sidewalk, you know, pulled up in a pile because nobody takes responsibility for it. Um, but that's not cool. Leaving your trash in a neighborhood doesn't increase property values. That's why we're talking about something as ridiculous as trash cans here in the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. It has a major impact on neighborhoods. San Francisco, how many times do you read about, well, yeah, a bunch of trash, human feces, dodge the human fecal matter on the sidewalk game. We all play that. I mean, everybody plays that in San Francisco. And then needles, you got needles everywhere. So San Francisco needs more trash cans, put that garbage away. That's what we're talking about today. All right, before we get into it, if you're new here, my name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies and I talk about things that you want to hear about that have to do with real estate and some other stuff. All right, let's get into it. The experiment grew out of the idea that public trash cans attract dumping, people putting stuff into garbage cans. Shocking. Some say it's time to reconsider. We need to rethink and re... I was going to I was going to retire that phrase, but it's just so good. I can't retire it. We need to rethink and reimagine our trash can game because our trash can game is a little light right now in San Francisco. We got trash everywhere. All right. It's no secret that much of San Francisco's trash, especially so in neighborhoods like the Mission Tenderloin and Mission Dolores, ends up on the sidewalks. Again, it's, it's just... It's not a good look. You don't want that look. Just it drives me crazy when I see a whole bunch of trash. And there are people out there doing a lot to clean up their streets, but that's an ongoing battle. Maybe if we had some more trash cans, things would be better. I don't know. Christine, a property owner who lives on 21st Street near Mission Street, was outside her home picking up small pieces of litter with a pincher, uh, pincer armed grabbing tool one morning. In an ideal world, People would have somewhere to put their trash, she says. Uh, But in San Francisco, that place would be on the sidewalk or on the steps of Christine's property where she regularly cleans up trash and sometimes has to call the city's 311 hotline when it's human feces and diarrhea. Oh, that is so gross. Angel Mayorga, Mayora, maybe, a 63-year-old resident who has lived in the mission his whole life, also often uses a 311 application on his iPhone to send notices to San Francisco Public Works. They clean it up, but the problem persists. Clean streets and cleanliness is a basic human need, Mayora said. It gets disgusting. Yeah, that would be. Having to deal with somebody else's diarrhea or human feces, mm, that is, it's so, that's brutal. But it's not only human feces, which residents always, uh, can always call 311 to clean up. It's everyday litter, cans, old meals, food wrappers, the kind of trash residents would normally toss in a receptacle. But there aren't enough, are there? Nope. It used to be that Mission and San Francisco had what most cities have, a ubiquitous public litter can. It's just out in the open. You got a bunch of public litter cans. 
that's I, I I'm forever throwing something in a garbage can like that, right? Just for whatever reason, I'm out and about. All right, I got some stuff. Don't want to keep it in my car. Can I throw this away at the garbage can? Yep, let's do that. But in 2007, then Mayor Gavin Newsom decided that the best way to reduce garbage in San Francisco was to get rid of garbage cans. Ross Mirk Arimi, former sheriff and supervisor of District 5, recalled having a meeting with Newsom and other high-ranking officials. According to Mira, uh, Mirka Rimi, is that I butchered this name. Sorry. Sorry, Ross. Uh, city leaders believe that trash cans can become a magnet for more trash that exceeds the can itself. Therefore, get rid of the trash can and all that filled up trash. Don't want that. That's just going to miraculously go away. People are just going to like take it with them, put it in their pocket, take it home. Hmm. Do you see where this breaks down? They believed cans were becoming a marker for people to unload whatever they wanted. People were going to put trash in the trash cans. We don't want that. That's a no-go. Get rid of the cans. It'll be a better look. Just, just This is what we're doing. I was not in favor of taking away trash cans, Mirka Rimi uh, said. Uh, I thought it was counterintuitive. But the administration was so insistent that this was an experiment we had to try. All right, it's been tried. And, and you hear about the explosion of garbage on the sidewalks, specifically in San Francisco. Been hearing about that narrative for a long time. This is one of the reasons this has happened, right? And they did. Some roughly 1,500 trash cans were pulled from city streets. Um, nowadays, residents routinely walk several blocks before coming across a trash can. Along the way, one sees to-go containers, paper bags, masks, gloves, and other trash from other pedestrians who simply gave up finding a trash can. And it's no wonder. That sucks. In 2007, the city had 4,500 trash cans. Now we have 3,113 public trash cans, 1,500 fewer cans than there were on the streets 14 years ago. What's the population of San Francisco? How much has that uh, gone up? Probably it's got to have gone up some. I know it's a highly dense market already and can it, can it explode that much more? I don't know. Um, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say there's more people living in San Francisco now than there were 14 years ago. And compared to other cities, even 4,500 cans added up to very few for a 47 square mile city. 3,113, even less so. Manhattan, for example, has three times the number of litter baskets, 9,144 to cover its 23 square miles, according to city, New York City Sanitation Department. So they've got triple the number of cans for half the amount of square footage. All right. So they got more, more garbage going to the dump. Than California does. Well, I, I think I can go out on a limb and say that, right? In contrast, the abundance of litter baskets in Manhattan is readily apparent. Nearly every corner has a trash can. Walk in San Francisco with trash in hand and keep walking. Keep on a going. Anyone who has a dog knows that you have to walk at least a couple of blocks to find a trash receptacle. And if you're not a civic-minded person of society, you might just dump your trash on the side, call it good, and keep booking it. All right, I'm tired of I'm tired of looking for a trash can. I've, I've already walked my two blocks. I'm just going to dump it right here. Whoosh. Let her rip. Although the idea to rid a city of public trash bins to clean it up sounds counterintuitive, it is based on the idea that when a city has many public trash, trash bins, people take advantage and use them for illegal dumping of household or business trash. Other cities have come out to the same conclusion. All right, but do they look as bad as San Francisco? In fact, New York City similarly got rid of 223 trash bins in Harlem in 2008 when officials decided the bins attracted dumping. That experiment fell short as well. Removing the baskets failed to appreciably decrease litter, according to the New York City Department of Sanitation. How do you come up with an idea of... Okay, so let's just see what happens if we get rid of all these trash bins. I mean, let's, let's just see. Huh, more, there's more garbage on the, on the street. That's all right. 
we need this experiment to, we need to, it to stew and develop for a little bit longer along with the trash and all the other stuff that people are leaving behind. Because when you get more trash on the ground, that's when people know to go along and clean it up. No, they just dump more, right? It's like, oh, this is already pretty crappy in here. This is a pretty crappy street. I'll just toss this, you know, my McDonald's quarter pounder, that uh, styrofoam thing. Are those biodegradable anymore? I don't know. Let's just toss that out the window. Let her rip. It's okay. I don't want to take my garbage home or I just don't want to deal with my garbage anymore. We're just going to throw it out the window. When, when I was a little kid and you might have watched this too, do you remember that um, there was a, a commercial and it had a Native American Indian, long dark hair, dressed up in kind of some some uh, original uh, clothing, some authentic clothing, whatever, however you want to say that. And people would throw trash out and it would trash out an area and a tear would come down his eye. You remember that? Because you're, you're basically trashing beautiful, natural environments. And uh, it was one of those things where, um, yeah, you, you were taught to not toss trash in a public area. Just don't do it. Don't do it. That's not what we're doing. We're just, ah, throw it out the window. It's okay. Somebody will grab that city. Yeah, they'll be by. Public Works Trash Experiment of 2017. That's our next. Uh, uh, oh, and I forgot at the end of this last paragraph, the failure of Newsom's plan to solve the city's trash problem has not gone unnoticed. Hey, why do we have all this trash there? I don't know. Newsom. Oh, yeah, he did this. In April of 2017, Public Works, in partnership with Mayor Ed Lee and District Supervisor Hillary Ronan, installed 38 new garbage cans along the Mission Street corridor between 14th and Cesar Chavez Streets. The Yes We Can pilot program in the Mission District was a direct response to the idea that more trash cans might mean less trash ending up on the sidewalk and streets. I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to think about that one for a while before I, before I was able to process my own conclusion. But I'm going to go with the Yes, We Can program. Did you see what they're doing there? Yes, We Can. That's a good, that's a good pilot program. I would say that's a two thumbs up and I would run with that bad boy. But that's just me. Promises were made at the time to track whether the additional receptacles result in less litter and fewer complaints to, uh, to 311, which came into existence in 2008. Looking at service requests from 12 months prior to the new cans and 12 months after, we did see more calls for overflowing cans, but we didn't see noticeably more complaints for services around litter, said Rachel Gordon, the spokesperson for the Department of Public Works. There is no data on calls for overflowing cans. But during the test period, service calls for litter patrol went from an average of 77 per month to 74 per month, down, not significantly, but down. And service requests for illegal dumping went from 70 a month to 61 a month after the program. A 10% decrease. No, that's more than a 10%. That's like a 12% decrease. That's, that's garbage going in the right direction to the dump or wherever they take it bundle it up and sell it to Canada? I don't know. Gordon says she believes the 38 new bins are still there. We put new cans out. They're still there. People are putting garbage in them. The stats are going down. This is a success. Glad we reimagined and rethought this one. At present, San Francisco still has the 3,113 public trash cans it had after Newsom's plan went into effect, compared to 4,500 in 2007. Those along 24th Street, Mission Street, and Cesar Chavez are serviced a minimum of twice a day. That's a lot of garbage service, right? They're serviced a minimum of twice a day, seven days a week, according to Recology. Gordon says that if district supervisors want more cans, they will put more in as long as the cans, quote, will not cause more problems than they are helping. Do we, did we ever establish that more cans were causing more problems? Or did we just kind of guess that that was the situation? I think we just kind of, and by we, I mean, um, future Governor Newsom. Back then, it would have been Mayor Newsom, right? I mean, why does he always come up with these harebrained ideas that don't really go anywhere that actually negatively impact so many people? 
why is he always the one that's behind this stuff? I don't know. It seems it's a little nutty, right? For starters, Supervisor Ronan said, we need more bins outside each of our parks. Um, adding that she's been advocating for more and better trash cans for District 9 for years. Wendy, when do you need to be an advocate for more trash cans? That to me is just a no brainer. And it's just, it's just so crazy that you would go down this road of, well, you know, if, if you have more cans, you got more garbage. And if you take those uh, miraculously, the garbage situation, it'll get better. It'll get better. People just take it on their own and they're all good people. We trust in everybody. We know we've got a little bit of a litter problem now, but if we get rid of those cans, I think people will do the right thing and they will put that litter they once used to put into the cans, they'll take it home with them. They'll walk four or five blocks, they'll find that garbage can because this is top on their priority list. We believe in you, citizens of San Francisco. You can do this. Now, nah, people are like, I got a bunch of crap. I need to put it somewhere. I do this all the time. Hey, can I get rid of that crap in the back of my car? I'm getting gas. I'll take it to the gas station, you know, receptacle. Or I clean my car out at home and yeah, all right, take it in my own garbage can because I don't want to litter on my own property, right? You just don't want to do that. But when you're in the city and you're like, ah, uh, let's drop it here. A lot of people do. That's what we're talking about. A lot of people do. San Francisco is indeed in the process of choosing from a number of new designs. Looking at uh, the lineup, we've got, I mean, they are all stainless steel. They are good looking trash cans. One's got a gate in it. And you, it you just, I think you, you scoop it down in. It's got all those lines. So I'm just describing to you nonsense at this point, right? One can looks like a uh, looks like a, like a little mini R two D two from Star Wars. It's got a little hole in it. Maybe one you can put um, pop cans or bottles. Do a little recycling there. The other one just looks like a modern space aged looking garbage can. Like if I looked at that shiny on the street, I'd go, I don't want to put garbage in there. That is too nice of a receptacle. No, I'm going to carry it over to that. You want your garbage cans to be kind of rough looking, I think, right? Because they're going to end up looking rough looking at the end because you're putting garbage in there. But you know, you got to have a safety era, you got to have a design concept for everything nowadays, because just a, you know, big blue can, you know, big uh, drum, I guess that won't do lined with plastic. I mean, that's, uh, that's festival style. I go to Dave Matthews at the gorge. That's how I want to see my garbage cans. I want to see a drum with the top cut off big, huge plastic thing in there. So they can just haul all the garbage away. And I feel comfortable dropping my garbage in there and they're going to take it at festivals. And I'm going down a weird road here at festivals. What you see at the end when everybody's leaving is those chairs, like the camping chairs. They're all broken because people got drunk and they, you know, sat down on it too hard and it wasn't really that sturdy and they snapped it or broken tents, broken tent poles. People don't take the time to put up their tent poles correctly and they, I'm just going to make this work. Snap. Ah, damn it. Tent garbage, you know, got to pick that up. So I want my garbage cans big and robust so I can throw stuff in them. Honey Mahogany, a legislative aide for Supervisor Matt Haney, called the current cans Renaissance trash cans, meaning that they are easy to misuse. Uh-oh, that's no good. They were picked by disgraced former public works director Mohammed Nouri, even though he was told they were ineffective by some supervisors, including Mira... Mirka Rimi, according to him, tracking the amount of trash on the sidewalk in San Francisco is made possible by data from 311, which started out a phone number and later became an app allowing residents to report garbage on the streets of San Francisco. For those of you in the San Francisco area, do you guys use 311? I know this is a thing. I, we just don't have anything here in Seattle like that. Do you use 311? I've, I've heard about this, but you know, I've heard people make references to it and it's like, what you've got a you've got like an app that you can call and they'll square away the garbage and a bunch of other stuff. I mean that's interesting. It's interesting that you need to have an app to cover that, right? Shouldn't this just be one of those things in society that because we live in a society should be handled differently? Yes, but they're not. Kind of tells you something about where San Francisco is gone, right? 
The service came into being in 2008, the year after Newsom got rid of 1,500 trash cans. How much is spent on the 311 service? That's a good question. So there are no before or after comparisons. Mayor Ed Lee introduced the 311 app in August of 2013. All right, so there was a what five year gap where there was just garbage everywhere. All right, so and still is in the past five years after adjusting for the size of the population. There we go. Mission Dolores has had the second highest number of complaints about trash. The mission ranks third in the tenderloin comes in first place way to go tenderloin strong work on your trash game. No, that's the that's the wrong direction. Um, and then there's a chart showing all the neighborhoods and, and their trash can complaints. In 2019, the mission had the second highest volume of 3111 calls for feces removal, strong feces removal game in, mission, in the mission, right? With 14% of citywide requests or a total of 3,942 service calls, I need you to come and pick up somebody else's poop. That's literally what's going on. This is so gross. This is so just cringe, right? The neighborhood's calls about overflowing bins reached 1,613 last year, putting it in third place for calls about bins. This is just stuff that I don't want to deal with, think about. Hence, don't live in California. When trash ends up on the sidewalk, residents call or file a report via 311 and crews, crews working from the public, uh, the Department of Public Works pick up the trash. What if it was just put in a trash can right at the get go? How reimagine and rethink that put that one in your pipe and smoke it, right? Isn't that the term? I mean, <laughs> it's just, just like, this is crazy. Fewer bins and bigger budgets for recology in the Department of Public Works. Although the city's population has increased by just over 10% since Newsom's 2007 plan went into effect, and the city has 1,500 fewer public bins, nevertheless, recology's budget has increased by more than a third to more than $22 million annually. According to Robert Reed, a spokesperson for recology, the Department of Public Works ends up picking up street trash from the 311 calls. Its crews, which include laborers, truck drivers, and supervisors, have increased by 25% over the past five years to 349. Get rid of the trash cans. You're going to save some money there. We're going to spend millions sending out our civil servants or hiring contracting with companies to do it because... We don't want to put more trash cans out there. Might be more garbage. Gordon said the goal is to respond to street cleaning requests within 48 hours, 24 hours for human or animal waste. Ah, that's good to know. Public work. You don't want that human or animal waste to sit on the sidewalk too long, along with the rest of the garbage. So do they come out? Do they just clean everything up? Or I, you know what? I am only authorized to do human and animal waste. I am not authorized to do that garbage. Well, put that, put, put that, put that can down, put that can down. We're, we're no go on the can poop, address the poop, just the poop. We're just here for poop today. Crazy stuff, right? Just that we have to even address this as a real issue, but much of the litter does not get reported and remains on the streets. And San Francisco got a bad look. These neighborhoods have a bad look as a result. It's just like, that's not good. Anthony, a laborer for the Department of Public Works who was picking up trash on Bartlett Street in the Mission, said that he struggles to keep up with requests. They just keep coming in. There's there's poop. There's garbage. They just it's just an ongoing battle. We're never going to get out from from be, beneath this. We need to fund the Department of Public Works. Not defund, we need to fund them. Right now, I am backed up, still trying to catch up from two days ago, and we have a thing in the city where we're supposed to get it done in a certain time. So I'm just trying to do what I can to get it done. This guy is Johnny on the hustle. Uh, Anthony, Anthony, strong work out there, picking up the garbage. Without more trash cans or pickup crews, Paul Mong, an aide to Supervisor Ronan, pointed to Proposition B. All right, here we go. Which 61% of the voters approved in November. The legislation will not add trash cans or trash crews, but it will create oversight of the Department of Public Works, and it will create a new Department of Sanitation and Streets in 2022 and a five-member Sanitation and Streets Commission to oversee the former. What? 
is this really necessary? All right. No new trash cans, no dudes that do that's that go out and pick it up. But we're going to create a, uh, some oversight because clearly, clearly the department of public works. It's not about the number of garbage cans. These guys in Department of Public Works, they need oversight. We need you to be watched by a watchdog because the garbage, this is your fault for not getting this done. So we've got an oversight for Department of Public Works and a new department, Department of Sanitation and Streets. Create a new department, no new garbage cans, no guys that pick it up, but two new departments and a five-member Sanitation and Streets Commission. So three new, basically new entities to oversee and in a five member sanitation and streets commission to oversee the former. This is nuts. Until then, supervisors appease their constituents with different solutions. Here you go. This is what we're doing right now. Mahogany, who helped with right proposition B, says that Haney uses add back money or money found through the city's regular budget process granted back to the community to clean up the streets around the Tenderloin and Civic Center where excessive trash was hurting small businesses. This, this is 2021. We should be able to have a solution across the board for garbage. It, it shouldn't be that hard. It just shouldn't. This should, not, this should not be a story. This should not be a podcast. And yet it is. So that's why I'm covering it. Because how many other people are going to cover garbage in the tenderloin? Probably not a lot. But this impacts... This is an example of the crazy politics going on in West Coast cities, of which Seattle is a victim in a large extent to a lot of this stuff. This is one of those instances. Too much garbage. Ah, take away the garbage cans. Our office has taken cleaning the district on ourselves and has put funding into street cleaning, investing in cleaning in a more direct way, and passing an ordinance requiring public bathrooms near homeless camps. There we go. We do not invest as a city to take care of streets, and it's predominantly people of color in urban areas who are being impacted by the Department of Public Works not taking responsibility for cleaning sidewalks, Mahogany said. It's a trash issue. Everybody in those neighborhoods is dumping their trash on the sidewalk because they don't have garbage cans. And they basically also don't have responsibility to take care of their own trash. They're just dumping it there. It doesn't get there. It doesn't get there just, oh, hey, there's a bunch of trash. People got to leave it, right? And that's what's going on. So you've got a society that says, it's okay to dump your trash on the sidewalk. This is what we're doing. You're done with something? Drop it wherever you are. It's okay. Somebody will call 311 and come pick up your crap. Literally, your crap off the sidewalk. Mission residents like Francesca Pastin, who has been living in the mission since 1994 and in San Francisco since 1976, regularly sends Ronan's office emails filled with photos of litter-strewn streets. There's a good one. This is one of my top 10 photos of a litter strewn street. Could you come clean it up? She would like to see public works take more responsibility and work proactively to clean up trash. That's where I would be is what can we do to proactively make our streets cleaner? Let's get ahead of the game. It's kind of like getting ahead of the game down in Portland on the violence, the gun violence going on. Don't take care of it afterwards. Don't provide solutions for it afterwards. Get ahead of the game. How do we get the garbage from not being dropped from some person's being to on the ground where it's no longer in their possession? If we had more garbage cans, would it go in there? Probably. Big fines for littering? Maybe. How about, or was it? It's like Singapore. I mean, you can really get hammered on for littering, right? I mean, big, big fines. What if you had that in San Francisco? She blames a careless mindset and a lack of concern among San Francisco residents. She tries to confront that with public awareness campaigns in schools and elsewhere. Kind of putting the word out. But I mean, this is something that parents need to teach their kids. Hey, don't litter. And yet, I think parents try and do that. But then somewhere, it just, when you become homeless or whatever, you just kind of forget all that stuff. You just let go of all those things you should be doing. And you just, you're, I think you're so down in the dumps and you're shooting up drugs. Maybe you've got mental 
problems. Who knows? Those those seem to be the common two themes in in homelessness. I mean, across the United States, and we've known that for years and years and years, but we don't really do anything about it. Um, I shouldn't say anything, but it, that issue just seems to be exploding. And so you've just got you got more people on the streets dropping more garbage, and they can't seem to get the garbage where it needs to go. How about the cleanups of the homeless encampments? Some of the stuff I've seen in Seattle is shocking, like dump truck in there, you know, having the big earth moving equipment, just scooping up trash. I mean, it's, it's literally like at the dump where you see the trucks leaving, get filled up, leave. It's just incredible the, the amount of trash that's left behind when you don't have you know, people who are putting it in the garbage can or a garbage can. That's a double whammy right there, right? But thus far, education hasn't worked. All right. Mir Mercarimi agrees that it's up to residents. Unless there is some manner of accountability, here we go, the A word again, accountability. We don't want accountability. We want to let our people just do their thing because we love them so much. We believe in you. You can put the garbage away. Oh, you can't? Oh, we got to create a 311 program. So unless there's some sort of a manner of accountability to make the social and personal responsibility work, the city will not be cleaned up. Agreed. 100%. Unless you get the people to start doing their stuff, not going to happen, right? All right, that's it. Uh, this is an article um, from Clara Sophia Daly, and it was from Mission Local. Good article. Um, you know, it pretty much covers the whole gamut of the trash issue in San Fran, right? Can you believe I just spent that long talking about trash? I guess I can, but it's just weird. It's like, Put your damn garbage in the garbage can. That's what I'm going to leave you with. All right. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for being part of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. I will catch up with you guys on the next one. Until then, stay safe. I will see you in just a little bit. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.